Hello, Amsters here. I just completed FNAF 6, so you know what time it is? Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory. FNAF, burn them all in the ultimate timeline. This is what is up next. <laughs> I'm so excited. Let's just jump into it and see the theory behind burn them all. What an ending. Hello, Internet! Welcome, Welcome to, to Game, Game Theory. Theory and page 20 <laughs> of our final FNAF timeline. Wow. Ridiculous. Last time we covered William Afton's rise mm -hmm. as a serial killer. How the loss of his we young did. son oh, you in did, 1983 yes. caused him to make one fateful promise that would ultimately serve as his driving force for decades. I will put you back together. Mm. Fueled by grief and obsession, Afton would lose himself in work and drinks. One night in a fit of rage, he lashes out against Henry's young daughter, Charlie, his first murder. This I still can't believe that he'd done this and just oh, the way that he'll kill it just comes together. Oh, FNAF 6 might be my favorite game. So this moment far. becomes the first domino to fall in a long sequence of events that ultimately mm -hmm. destroys William's life and the lives of those around him. That one murder gives Afton a taste for blood, resulting in the deaths of 10 more children across two different pizzerias. Those you. children go on to possess animatronics, giving they Afton his first exposure to Remnant and the potential solution for bringing his son back to life. The need to learn more about uh. this miraculous power leads him to produce the fun time animatronics as well as their capture devices robot and that's how sister location comes in isn't it where they use sister location to send out different animatronics to different uh, locations to try and get as much remnant as possible and also since uh, last time or whenever a video has gone up uh, i've got a little bit more addicted when <laughs> <laughs> I got the silver eyes, the twisted one, and the fourth closet. I've heard silver eyes is one of the best FNAF books as well. So, I don't know what the bonus poster is, but I'm getting addicted to the lore. I thought angsty teen in sister location meant like a different personality or something that he was trying to train. It, it, Lots it's designed not... to bring kids to him for experimentation and oh, there you go. Okay. remnant. Except there was one thing that he didn't account for. His daughter's curiosity. He made the robots too appealing and it would cost him Elizabeth's life. Now with mm -hmm. two children put back together, Afton was more desperate and crazed than ever, returning to defunct pizzerias to steal the possessed metal still living inside their walls. What he didn't account for we though see that, ghosts, yeah, we see that in pay FNAF for the sins of his past. Ooh. When last we left him, William was springlocked, leading to death behind a secret wall. Gone, but certainly not forgotten, as we're about no. to see in today's video. Today, we're finishing up chapter two of our story, wrapping Still? up the Afton era. Okay, Over okay. the next six pages, we switch our focus to the other main character of the franchise, Mike, a young boy ah. dealing with the fallout of a stupid childhood decision with tragic consequences. Because we play as Mike during sister locations. I still haven't done the secret ending. I'm maybe spoiled in this video, but that's fine. It's different to actually like watching it and actually playing it yourself. A young man whose life is best described as collateral damage. Caught the he blast radius that. of William's whirlwind of destruction. Now, before we begin, let me just rip off the band-aid now. We won't okay. be finishing the timeline today. I, I know, I know. I'm sorry I wanted to, but covering FNAF VR, AR, mm -hmm. and security breach. Well Ah, so we got, we got, <laughs> what it, we got all the other secret endings, we got AR to do, we got Security Breach, we got the two Space Fighter games that's also been released as well. We have so much content and I love it. Wound up taking me an additional nine pages of script. Well, the and I've already made timeline is already fully out part, by the time. So I just had to make the executive I'm watching call to this break anyway. this one up into two. Don't worry, that part is already written. It is already recorded. It is just in the process of being edited. It is a hefty episode. So mark it on the your editors, calendar. That one's actually going to be going live job. on March 25th. It's also mm -hmm. coming complete with a live talk back where we go back over everything from the past couple episodes, as well as having Ooh. ourselves some very special guests. So overall, that one should yeah, be I a do lot of I watch fun. That. Fair warning, though, the conclusions we've reached that solve security breach who they are controversial I yeah we were not, we're not gonna watch them yet we're just gonna watch this one and then once i've completed security breach that is when we can watch the final episode of the time i feel good about them like i think that we've locked in on a lot of the answers here but uh whoa, they're gonna raise a lot of discussion <laughs> let's just say that you're either gonna love that episode or hate it i don't Kinda really think like there's gonna be much in between on that one anyway without any right. further ado uh, let's cover a it. chunk of the timeline that's a lot less controversial let's meet mike <laughs> The Afton era. William still wasn't continue. back. Weird. Michael knew his father sometimes traveled for work, disappearing for days on end, but usually there was some sort of notice, a phone call, a post-it, mm -hmm. something. It's not like Michael and his father were close, far from it, but as a household of two suffering men coping with years of tragedy and loss, there was at least some element of communication between the two of them. They were 
And Mike's gonna have more guilt due to him actually being there and being actually the one that kind of caused the actual death as United well. United by a name and a shared pain. This time though, things felt different. William had left nothing. His absence was longer. There were no check-ins, no updates, just silence. Oh, Something had why. happened. If there was one thing Michael knew about his father, it was that he had contingencies, safety checks, backup plans. His father was a <laughs> careful and guarded man. He held his cards close to his chest, and as such, William had prepared him in the event that something like this ever happened. Normally, his father kept his home office locked, but in the event of an ah. unexpected prolonged absence, Michael had been instructed to enter his father's office and Ooh. look behind Ooh, a step closer coming home is the Fazbear Frights book and that is number four Oh Oh, oh okay. Shelves mounted in the corner of the room. Rolling his eyes, Michael entered the office. He never fully understood how William was able to spend so many hours of his days locked up in here. There was just nothing to do. Most of this place was empty. He dragged was himself over to the shelf in the corner, expecting to find an emergency contact list, a family safety deposit box. Mm, but what he actually found there was completely unexpected. Father, it's me, Michael. I did it. I found it. Ooh, that's a sexy voice. I, I, I've heard, I've looked around on Twitter. Apparently, the FNAF community finds my, or Mike is apparently hot. That's what, <laughs> that's what I found in my Twitter searching. It was right where you said it would be. The shelf swung open and revealed a oh. giant industrial mm -hmm. elevator. One that led straight down into an underground bunker. But, but that was impossible. No. Hidden inside his childhood home was a secret entrance to an enormous underground science lair? That it, would it be weird. It didn't make any sense. Seriously, it didn't make any <laughs> sense. And yet, here it was, mapped yes. directly underneath the floor plan of the house that he'd grown up in, lost his brother in, been that tortured is nuts. in. Michael thought that he'd known his father, a prideful, sad, angry man man with petty everyday problems but clearly he'd been living with a stranger this entire time now my thing is to build something like that as an underground bunker that takes a lot of infrastructure it takes a lot of money so when was that actually built or is it something pre-existing that was already built on top of the house that he knew about with the plans does that date back even further in time in the 1920 1930s or is it that he built that and there's just no evidence or law explaining him more of it? His father had secrets. Suddenly, the days of William being locked inside of his office made sense. He'd been here the entire time. Where was here, though? Was this Circus Baby's entertainment and rentals? Mm. The Circus Baby restaurant always did seem to be a deeply personal project for father. A failure of his that cut unusually deep, especially after that oh. first location had to be closed prematurely due to the gas leaks. After that day, father really gas did leaks. to change, to lose himself even more in his work. Clearly, the entrance he had found was some sort of secret back way into the facility one that well, that's where he's spending most of his time to navigate his father had been working here but in secret why and that's when he found her at the end of the facility circus mm -hmm. his father's pride and joy except something was different about her she wasn't mm -hmm. like the others the way she talked the stories she told this wasn't just a robot she was alive somehow and mm -hmm. not only was she alive she also felt familiar there is oh. something bad inside of me i'm broken i can't be fixed will you help me was this his sister? William's baby girl? But how? Oh, yeah, that, Why? That's what, we what was this place? He dug around some old files and found blueprints outlining the features of these animatronics. Whoa. Storage containers, voice mimicking, St parental what? tracking. And was that uh? a child in Freddy's stomach? Was Squeeze what? Uh, so they were they were at literally the sister location ones were built to out <laughs> store kids. <laughs> Oh, boy. oh, that's creepy. Oh, oh, man. Was his father collecting and experimenting on kids? Were all the rumors that he'd heard throughout his past actually true? That the animatronics came to life at night? That there were murders done in all the pizzerias? That his father had somehow been the prime suspect in all of it? Oh, Suddenly, so we Michael's know mind about flashed oh, back yeah, to his persistent that, nightmares throughout his childhood. Had he been experimented on too? Tears stung in his eyes as anger, fear, and confusion filled his body. Ooh. His father's secrets were pouring out. William wasn't just a lame, overworked father. He was a monster, toying with <laughs> Life itself. Well, we Suddenly everything that. clicked. He frantically looked around the room, blinking human heads on poles, staring back at him. Green yeah, the, they were disgusting. That's why it, it seems FNAF 5 and FNAF 6 seem to be the most 
interesting in terms of lore. I, I honestly, I love sister locations. Yeah, the mini games on Night Four was exceptionally hard, but. It was so different, and you had the storyline and the voice lines. I liked it. I really did. I know, um, yeah, it doesn't like it, but... Green eyes, uh, his sister. I blue eyes, it. his brother. Closed eyes, his mom. All just staring, expectantly. These were meant Why to be is human. His William was working eyes. down here trying to make believable humans, literally rebuilding the family that they had both lost. The small little girl robots with their British accents oh. roaming the hallways <laughs> of this underground facility suddenly took on a whole new context. <gasps> Oh, so it was you! It wasn't even baby, it was this weird thing that was trying to get inside of my little cubby hole. Oh, I would have punched that. <laughs> I would have seen that thing. Were those meant to be his sister? A replacement for her? A clone? Was William building clones of his sister? They seemed to know him, after all, to react to his presence. They were all there. They didn't recognize me at first, but then they thought I was you. Oh. He always did have a bit of a resemblance to his father. Michael's mind reeled as the reality of his world crumbled to dust. No, no, he had to get them out of there. If this really was his sister, heck, if any of these things were human, souls, whatever remnant of the humans that they once yeah, were, they needed to be rescued. They always put us back inside. There's nowhere for us to hide here. Led by the voice of Circus Baby, he marched through the now empty halls of the Funtime Auditorium. He would mm -hmm. lead them. He would protect them. And finally, he would be able to forgive himself for the killing of his brother so many years. <laughs> ah, yeah, you did see that you one coming. Room, yep, I'm aware of that. The scooper only hurts for a moment. <laughs> yeah, just why it's Scooper? Your that violent extraction arm? Michael had seen uh -huh. that one in the pile of blueprints. Some Whoa, 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 well, let's back it up a minute. A remnant injector. Ah, least trace lines amount of on interior. Over usage, over exposure is negative effects. Ah, um, base note, when heated, no observed motion, keep the heat tank at a substitute level, blah, 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 My, ooh, there is a possibility that overheating might neutralize the effects permanently. Something about heat rendering the magical silver metal inside useless. In reality, prior to getting himself spring-locked and put behind the wall, William's methods had become increasingly sophisticated, with a mechanized arm that could- uh, uh, Oh! That's why! He- <gasps> Okay, spoilers, just in case you haven't played FNAF 6, I just want to throw that out of there. He- oh, That's why he tries to burn them all alive, because he knows the remnant will make it useless and evaporate in the souls. Oh. And infuse new bodies with a soul. William could finally give and take away life. The only thing he needed were the bodies. But William wasn't the only one looking for bodies, as Michael was about to learn. But if we looked like you, then we could hide. If we looked like you, yes. then we would have somewhere to go. Why Michael was gonna be the hero to help these animatronics, all right. He was Why gonna help the haunted it, tubes and wires of these animatronics escape, just not in the way that he anticipated. His sister had lied to him, another game of pretend. The scooper plowed forward, digging its extraction arm into his body. As he heard oh. his bones ripping through his flesh, Michael blacked out. Oh, oh the, su wrong with the me. surprise! I should be dead, but I'm oh. not. Oh, so the remnant has gone into Michael? Oh no, was I meant to find this out during the secret ending? I'm so sorry! It's so hard! The secret ending with Ennard is so hard. I, I, oh, but I will try and get it done, but we're learning. For the next several months, Michael's life was not his own. He was forced to comply with a tangle of wires and spirits that lived inside of him. His body Ooh. felt like an overfilled balloon, begging oh, to burst surprised. day by day. Week by week, his flesh began to sag and discolor. He was a walking, oh. talking, rotting corpse, <laughs> alive, but wishing he wasn't. He was a puppet, a walking shell. And while he did his best to conceal his fate, there was only so much a man filled with robot spaghetti could do. The entity in his innards would eventually leave, but by that point the damage had been done. His decaying flesh stank, turning him into a literal purple guy. But still oh, so he- Oh! So when they burnt him in FNAF 6, he was already pretty much dead anyway. 
still, even with no bones, even with rotting purple flesh and begging to die, Michael continued to live. That silvery metal remnant injected by the scooper meant that he couldn't die. His anger ah. also refused to die. What he had seen down there in his sister's location had rocked him to his core. His father had killed and captured dozens. His experiments had killed his sister and then tortured him throughout all his childhood. He was actively yeah. trying to build human replicants. He didn't know where his father was, but Michael knew that he was out there somewhere. I've been living in shadows. There is only one thing left for me to do now. I'm going what to come that find you. Michael oh. had to correct for the sins of his father. He had to make things right. Michael would burn Fazbear Entertainment to the ground. I mean, what else could you do when your skin was permanently purple? Uh, Michael's strategy true. was simple. He would apply for night security guard positions at the old defunct pizzeria location. Is that meant to be a reference to actual Help Wanted as well, or is that just Help Wanted like in terms of an advertisement? Am I looking too deep into this? What does it mean? What does Help Wanted mean? Does it mean this? Does it connect to that? I can see so it that now. That way no one ever had to see him or smell him during his shift. And all these old shuttered locations ah, did need good. guards. Teenage vandals and squatters were always looking to get inside these abandoned Silver buildings. Silver eyes? And yet uh -huh. no one ever really wanted to work an overnight graveyard shift unless they were practically out of options. Enter yeah. Mike. One by one, he would take on the job of security guard, changing his name each time to ensure that no one was able to follow his paper trail. Once Fritz. inside, he could tamper with the animatronics and figure out how they worked, writing about his experiences in his security logbook. While there, he would uh, listen to the old tapes where upper management one. awkwardly welcomed new recruits to their summer jobs, even though he was working there nowhere near the summer months. He heard the gory details of his father's franchise from the outsiders looking mm -hmm. in, confused and afraid about what was happening in the walls around them. Sometimes, he would see his brother in the form of the Golden Fred suit. It's me appearing on the walls around him. Except now, there was something else there. He was no longer alone. Another <laughs> angrier presence was also in the suit. As if that would be Cassidy. Two spirits were forced to share the same body. And Golden Freddy would attack him now. It was aggressive. Its vengeance wanted to lash out at anyone with the Afton name. Anyone who wore a security guard outfit. Over time, Mike worked his way through the old restaurants. The original pizzeria, the bigger, better Freddy Fazbear's. He spent weeks there looking for clues as to his father's whereabouts. And each time at the end of his week ah, shift, he would then free. set the location on fire. Remnant can't survive high temperatures after all. So burning away whatever spirit-laden animatronics that still existed inside seemed like a winning strategy. All oh, so that was Michael that ended up burning FNAF? I I've literally just- I I'm recording this as I've just completed FNAF 6 because I wanted it nice and, like, fresh in my memory. But I thought the tape or the recording was alluding to Henry burning it down, but it was actually Michael? Because he says, oh, you're in- the you're also trapped in here, but it feels like you want to be here as well. That's why I was thinking he was referring to maybe Mike because of him being a part of the family and all the different animatronics. Oh, so it was him. All this revisiting of his past, though, was causing the nightmares to begin again. Hallucinations that brought him back to his childhood. The guilt around killing his brother. His dreams were oddly mixed with the shrill phone calls of the security guards. But it would all be Whoa. worth it in the end. The goal was to eventually, eventually stumble across the one location. The one job that would finally reunite him with his father. <laughs> Little did Mike know that that day would come sooner than he expected. 2023, an advertisement came across Mike's TV. <laughs> Asbear Frights, a new horror attraction in inspired by the awful crimes that occurred around Freddy Fazbear's Pizza so many years ago. It made oh. Mike sick. People looking to make a quick buck off the tragedy of others. Off his own family. So hold on. This wasn't a joke or entertainment. Regardless, he had to be a part of it. If this team was combing through his family's history, they might stumble across something that could be useful. And if it- Hold on, I've not played all the games yet, but- FNAF 6 doesn't take place in 2023, does it? And I don't know what time Security Breach takes place in. So they have a game based off the books, or if they haven't, they could potentially have one in the future? If his father was truly still alive as he suspected, there would be no way that he wouldn't show up here. Maybe finally, finally this could be the final chapter in his family's marathon of tragedy. Mike applied for the job and was immediately handed the keys. Years of doing this had taught him that security Did they not question him why he was purple? security checks. They also liked how creepy Mike looked. They thought it was a costume. On <laughs> theme for the job. What little what? Thing what? Hey, glad you came back for another night. I promise. It'll be a lot more interesting this time. <laughs> for weeks, there was Why nothing. But just as Mike considered you? giving up, he received the call that he'd been waiting for for years. You're not gonna believe this. We found one. A real one. Could this finally be him? That was sure enough, free if I remember was. years. Really inside his iconic golden Bonnie Springlock suit. Only now it was green and decaying with age. And there they were. A small family of broken men finally reunited.
It's been a long time, Dad. Mike had always struggled with the phantoms of his past haunting him, but now all the animatronics he'd encountered over the past months hopping from pizzeria to pizzeria suddenly sprang to life. Their burned faces haunting him oh, as he tried to keep track of his father on the cameras. It would seem that William's mere presence had put the spirits on high alert. Ultimately, they were harmless, more annoying uh, than anything else. But so that's why they didn't kill you during FNAF 3. I was kind of wondering what the phantoms were, but they're just spirits. <sighs> It's all making sense. It's all coming together now. There was one that felt different from the others. One that was more than just a mere phantom. The security puppet. If he looked at the cameras at just the right moment, he could see it floating there through the holes. He could even see its reflection in the water pooled on the ground. What? It would seem like... He wasn't the only one there on a mission. Well, he was Ho dealing with Hold on, is, Michael can you actually do that, that in FNAF 3? Dealing with the spirits of this place, finally setting him to rest. Hopefully this means a happier day You can day see all Charlotte in FNAF 3? Himself. And in that moment, he felt the air around him release, like pressure being let out of a bottle. The building sighed as if five spirits had finally been allowed to move on. He had the sense oh. that his brother was a part of them. He rigged the wiring inside the building to misfire and the dry, desiccated walls erupted in flames. It is finished. Except, it <laughs> was not. Somehow, <laughs> no. through sheer force of will, Afton remained. He had survived, and How? Mike would need to find a new way of finishing off his father. Luckily, the solution would present itself later that year. Not from Mike, but from another victim that had been left in his father's wake. So, unless I... MadPat might just say exactly what I'm just gonna ask, but... So, it, maybe the spirit is too powerful, or the remnant if it's too powerful, cannot be burnt? We're talking about becoming a Fazbear Entertainment franchisee. Restaurant ownership and management. Something almost anyone can do with a limited degree of success. Mm -hmm. You are now the face of the newly rebranded Freddy hey. Fazbear's Pizza. Fazbear Entertainment as a brand has been closed for years. William had been stuck in a suit in a wall. The only person who legally could bring the franchise back was Henry. But he'd largely pulled out of the franchise around the time of his father's disappearance. Something was up. Uh -huh. Surely this had to be some kind of a trick, right? Mike, doing what he did best, applied for a franchise and immediately got the job. There was just one thing out of the ordinary. This would be Paragraph FNAF 6, four. wouldn't it? If you are playing this tape, that means that not only have you been checking outside at the end of every shift, as mm -hmm. you were instructed to do, yeah. but also that you have found something that meets the criteria of your special obligations under Paragraph 4. No employment contract he'd ever signed required him to keep special lookout for independently moving animatronics outside the restaurant. Now he mm. knew something was up here. Henry was luring them all back. Rather than trying to go to them, like Mike so had done for cool. years, Henry was doing the opposite. He was putting them the all under the same roof. He was finishing them off for good. Mike oh, and that's why they're... Hold on, no, did no, he didn't burn sister locations, did he? He didn't burn the underground bunker, maybe. I would understand Afton from free, but these two are from sister locations. So did he... Did Mike end up burning sister location then? Mike knew this wasn't meant to be a restaurant. It was meant to be a prison. No, maybe the wife did because in the uh, in the uh, clip that you get with the exotic butters and like eating the popcorn, she says, "I even burnt the house down." So maybe it was his wife that burnt down the the house that ended up burning down the bunker as well. A containment vessel, a locked box, meant to trap them all in so they could finally end the madness. It took a few nights, but eventually everyone was there. His father, yeah, took the six, puppet, the robot six. spaghetti that had once violated his body, and his Whoa. sister, now hopelessly devoted to serve the man that had once gotten her killed. It was time. He had been instructed to seal the doors and leave, but while he locked everything down, he didn't move on. If this was oh. truly meant to be the end, oh, if the remnant needed to be washed Holy away, stayed. he needed to be a part of that. This is where your story ends. And to yep, you, yep, yep, yep. volunteer who somehow found this job listing not intended for you. Although there was a way out planned for you. I have a feeling that's not what you want. I have a feeling that you are right where you want to be. And to you monsters trapped <laughs> in the corridors, be still. Yep. And give up your spirits. They don't belong to you. For most of you, I believe there is peace and perhaps more waiting for what you. What ending, huh? Although for one of you, the darkest mm. pit of hell has opened to swallow you whole. So don't keep the devil waiting, old friend. And with that oh, that's such a hard line! <laughs> oh, it gives you chills. Oh, so there was... It, it was Henry. Henry brought them all together. 
but Mike ended up staying because he was like, I'm finally at peace. Everyone's here in my family, so we might as well all go out. That, it was over. The Afton yep. legacy died with all of them trapped inside of a literal box. Oh, and the yeah, there's Lefty. danced around the office. Mike, for the first time in decades, was happy. But William wasn't gone yet. Although the darkest huh? pit of hell was open and waiting for him, something or someone wouldn't allow him to move on. Instead, oh. he found himself locked in moments from his past. The pizzeria, his son's room, his underground bunker. It was as if his brain Brain's neurons were all firing at once, overloaded, mixing and matching all his biggest fears, regrets, failures. What was this place? How did he get here? He called out into the silence. Whoa, whoa, then whoa. Without warning, animatronics, both new and old, began to jump out at him, huh? bite him, rip huh? him limb from limb. The pain was immeasurable. Make it stop. Make it stop. William, for the first time, longed for death, an end to this torture. Just as it felt like he couldn't take it anymore, everything was quiet again. It was as if the world had been reset. There was a brief moment of quiet, and then the onslaught began again. Dozens of faces from his past all focused on him. A waking nightmare that he couldn't escape from. More so this is all happening why he's getting burnt alive he's just like Aah! oh ugh. imagine having that like cutscene in game and hearing all well, uh, i don't know where they got the voice line from for that or pain more ripping it was his own personal hell but why why couldn't he just die and then he saw them a group of characters he never thought oh, he'd see again Those god. janky stolen characters god damn it <laughs> The mediocre, mediocre melodies. melodies. It had all started to go wrong once they showed up. Once Henry had made them. But mixed in with their obnoxious southern drolls, William heard something else. It was barely a whisper, but he could just make out the words. He tried to release you. He tried to release us. But I'm not going to let that happen. I will hold you here. So that's Cassidy? I will keep you here. No matter how many times they burn us. That voice. He knew that voice, but from where? Greetings from the family. Right. Because Tinker was the first have one. William thought that, that would. He'd done a lot of awful things, but. Yeah, there's been a lot of killings. Could you verify which one, please? By hair or eye color or anything like that? It would be Charlotte, wouldn't it? Charlotte would only be the but regret. There was always. No, it would be Cat. I'm an idiot. It'd be Cassidy because of how brutally he killed uh, them. He's the one that stood out. Not Charlie, his drunken act of revenge. Not Susie, his first true murder. No. Instead, it was the one that he had lost control with. The one that he had broken beyond repair for no good reason mm -hmm. other than because he could. The one that he'd stuffed inside the golden bear that his partner used to wear. Cassidy. They were back, and now they were trying to punish him. To make him suffer like he'd made them suffer. It was almost like William and Cassidy's souls had been locked together, fused by a collective uh -huh. rage in spite, each refusing to move on. But while Cassidy was so focused on taking revenge, they actually did the one thing that would be the downfall for so many others. They kept William alive. Even though fire should have destroyed the remnant that was coursing Whoa, through yeah. his being, Cassidy kept William breathing, paving the way for his escape. So the only way to kill Afton then, if he gets killed in the later games, is to finally put Cassidy to rest. Because by the t when you finally put Cassidy to rest, that's when Afton can die. William's will was so strong, his soul so powerful that he managed to put a part of himself inside the circuitry that housed uh, the Springlock suit. And there, uh, his consciousness lay inside a single circuit board waiting. Waiting for what? someone to find him and set him free. A person what? that no one would suspect. Okay, so a bit of a shorter chunk, but an important one as we shift perspectives to Mike and... Put himself into a circuit, but uh -huh. so we're going digital now. Oh, we're going full AI, are we? Oh, what? Tell his side of the okay, story. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see the and security breach. Having so much to explain, I didn't want to rush through things by trying to cram it all in here. Don't worry. I know you've all been patient. The final video is happening on March 25th. That is mm -hmm. locked. It is getting ready to go. Trust me. I want this we thing can, to be over. We can't done watch it until we complete its security breach. Stretching it up for the views. But before we wrap up for the day, I did want to talk about the big Orville elephant in the room. Mike's quest for revenge. You might okay. have noticed that I was vague about the dates, and there's a good reason for that. I don't know them. There is no good way for me to make them fit in. Here's what I do know. We know with a high amount of certainty that Michael Afton is the character that we play as up until Ultimate Custom Night. Mike Schmidt and Fritz Smith, the security guards for FNAF 1 and FNAF 2 respect- Would Ultimate Custom Night be in William Afton's head then? Because it showed all the different locations in the nightmare that he has. I haven't played Ultimate Custom Night, I don't know, I'm just theorizing 
that it might be that because when he was screaming in his head, it had the four different locations. I don't know. Uh, notice of termination, note the first, okay. Effectively, get fired for, quote, tampering with the animatronics and odor. So weird connection between the two of them, right? But now, look at the phantom animatronics that are haunting us in FNAF 3. They use mm. models from both FNAF 1 and FNAF 2, meaning whoever is sitting in that security guard chair, Fazbear Frights, they have to have seen both locations and their animatronics. And that's not all. Their designs are burnt. It's a weird detail in the game, and it's something that the character encyclopedia repeatedly calls attention to. The burned texture for these phantom animatronics animatronics. Why is that so unusual though? Fazbear Frights is the first time in the franchise that we hear about anything burning down. From that point on in the story, it's oh. like the characters turn pyro and are suddenly setting fires left and right. But for the first <laughs> three games, nothing ever catches fire. The animatronics are just moved or repurposed in some way. So when did they burn? And why would our security guards see them as being burned? Someone has to have been going location to location, setting yeah. these places on fire, purging the sins of the past. We know we're definitely playing as Mike and sister location in FNAF 6 based on the in-game dial. And in mm -hmm. FNAF 4, there's an Easter egg where we can hear the phone call from night one of FNAF 1, meaning that whoever's in that really? bedroom has heard the recording as a security guard. We also know that Mike has seen the nightmare animatronics based on his drawings in the security logbook. So, so would it go FNAF 1, FNAF 2, sister locations, FNAF 4, then going into FNAF 6? Maybe? Hmm. So overall, there is solid evidence that connects all of FNAF's 1 through 6. You'll also notice how the character encyclopedia doesn't have a page for Mike Afton. This thing has a page for Chocolate Bunny Bonnie, but not <laughs> Michael. Some tells me they don't want us to confirm how many games he's been in, because that would confirm too yeah. much of the theory. In short, this gives us an incredibly compelling and complete narrative. Mike as our protagonist, and William his father as our antagonist. Mike accidentally kills his brother in Fredbear's mouth, which begins our story and sets William down his pathway of destruction. Mike oh, is then so haunted by the guilt FNAF of his past and his Oh no, so FNAF 4 would be first, then it would be FNAF- Okay, 4, 1, 2, sister locations 4, 6. Yes? Yeah? Are we in agreement on that, or have I got that wrong? ...right across the rest of the games. In Sister Location, he learns what his father's been up to and realizes what he has to do to correct it. After failing to finish the job in FNAF 3, he ultimately helps Henry end it all in FNAF 6. It is yeah. great. It is a clean narrative. There is just one problem, timing. Mike's quest can't really start until he's been down to Sister Location, seen Baby, and gotten himself scooped. That's when he yep. finds out about Afton's secret life. It's also when he's gonna start to smell, because, you know, he's a walking, talking, rotting corpse. And yes. we know that he's not going down into the bunker until the Funtime animatronics have been made, Freddy's has been closed, and Afton is out of the picture. That all should be happening post-1993. Ah, so... <laughs> what? Oh, so it's not. So four... Four might start first, then. Or no, yeah, because of the killings. And then he'd be... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Oh god, I feel so mad. Pat, I I feel I feel sorry for you. The, 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 the scrambling and William putting everything together. William is behind a wall, but that then presents us with a few problems. Afton has already dismantled the original animatronics, mm -hmm. as we see in the FNAF 3 mini games. How are those things getting burned if they're already deconstructed? But more importantly, we see FNAF 2 paychecks with the date 1987. That is way earlier than I think it can be. To be fair, Fritz Smith's pink slip on night seven doesn't have yeah, a date. Yeah, but that's a, a different bit name. Weird to say that the first few nights are in 1987, and then employee number three is hired on years after the restaurant closes. Anyway, just wanted to call that out because I don't have a solid answer for it, and I'd love to see your comments down below. And with that, mm. my friends, this chapter comes to a close. Oh, we'll see no. you on March 25th for the grand yeah. finale as we cover the final three games in the franchise, and the controversial answers we think solves what those games Ooh. were trying to tell us. Until then, my oh, fast heads, we're remember, gonna see even though Afton kinda succeeded in being brought back to life, gotta admit, he's still looking a little bit on the dry, dehydrated yeah, side. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Those three fighters and being dead for a decade will tend to do that to you. Mm. Fortunately, thanks to today's sponsor, Air Up, I think uh, we can go. help him out with the hydration thing, not the whole burning alive thing. You guys know that I hate drinking plain water. It's just boring. And that then led me to my current crippling Diet Coke addiction. However, Air Up has found a way to harness the power of science to get me to drink more water, which not only do I love in principle, but I can truly say has changed my drinking habits forever. They use these special scent pods that fit directly onto the top of the bottle, and almost as if by magic, 
magic, it makes the water tastes like Flavored. basically anything you want. How? If you guys have ever watched Food Theory, you probably heard me say that smell is more important than taste, and that's exactly what Air Up's taking advantage of here. These pods are full of flavorful smells like watermelon, peach, wild berry. That one's my personal favorite. And by having the pods in front of your nose as you're drinking, it makes your brain think that that's what. So yeah, you're just tricking your brain. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, yeah, you're an idiot. Yeah, you're a big dum dum. Look, if you can just smell it, then your mind just thinks, yes, that's you're what's tasting. in there. But in fact, you're just drinking good old H2O. No additives, no preservatives, no sugars, no syrups, no aspartame, no nothing. I love mm. my air up. But naturally, when I tell other people, could that be the exact same in kind of like the FNAF law that they could use the power of smell to make you think that something else is happening or something like that? No, we're looking too much into it. <laughs> we're looking into a sponsorship that could tie in to Five Nights at Freddy's. Once Ooh. again, head on down to the description, get yourself a starter pack, and remember to use the code FREEFAVE5. That is F-R-E-E-F-A-V -E -E number five, no spaces, to get your free favorite five variety pack. Experience how crazy awesome a water bottle can really be. And as always, my friends, remember, it's all just a theory. A game, a game theory. theory. And there we have it. Until next time when we complete Security Breach, we will be back for the last ultimate timeline video oh man i'm excited there's a lot of content that we've got to do but as always thank you so much for joining me on this video there will be some things that you can click on at the end of the video if you want to go check out some more content like five nights at freddy's playlist and some other videos as well if you do go watch another video from this video then make sure to comment i like cheesy bread all right <laughs> I like cheesy bread in whatever video that you watch next if you watch it from this video. So thank you so much as always and I will see you One, in the next video. Two, bye, bye, three, bye, 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 bye. Can't what you have now. Don't can't what you don't have.